So I'm here with Chris, he's our head ranger, and we are with the camels. So Chris, tell me a bit about these beautiful creatures. Well, there are three types of camels in the world. There's the first species, which is the dromedary. That has one hump, and they form up to 90% of the world's camels. Uh, the second type is a wild Bactrian camel, has two humps, comes from the deserts of uh, Mongolia and northern China, and they're super rare, they're critically endangered. There's thought to be less than a thousand of them left in the wild, so they're in real trouble. And then the third type is what we have here. We have the domesticated Bactrian camel. Now, although they're not super rare, um, we keep them here to um, highlight the plight of their wild counterparts, really. Yeah. Now, most people associate camels with arid, dry environments. That's so how right. are they adapted to live in those conditions? Perfectly adapted to desert life, really. Everything from down at the bottom with the feet, they don't have hooves, they've got a soft pad which splays out really wide so that they don't sink into the sand dunes. And then uh, they've got really long eyelashes. They've got three sets of eyelashes that can grow up to 10 centimetres long. It stops the sand getting in their eyes. My favourite part of them is their noses. If you look at this one here, you can see that they're able to shut their nostrils tight so that stops the sand whooshing up their nose in a sandstorm. All adaptations to living in the arid, dry desert conditions. That's right, yeah, but we can't talk about camels without mentioning their magnificent humps. Yeah. Um, now, a lot of people think they're full of water. They're not, they're full of fat. So when there's uh, not a lot of food around and they're crossing the desert, then uh, they'll rely on that fat storage to keep them going. And as they uh, use that up, the humps do start to flop over a bit. So the fact that our camels' humps are standing up and proud means that they're good, healthy camels. So tell us a bit about the individuals we've got here then, Chris. Right, so here we have uh, Alice. This is our large female one. Uh, she joined us uh, in 2019. And then a week later, we took uh, in Arthur, who came to us from Blackpool Zoo. So they aren't mother and son like people think. They're actually boyfriend and girlfriend. Right. Hopefully, within a few years, when they mature, then we'll hear the pitter patter of tiny camel feet. That would be fantastic. Yeah. Young camels being born. One thing I notice is the beautiful thick fur. Look at that. I mean, that is a really long piece of fur there. But they do lose that come springtime because obviously it's too hot for them. Also attracts flies yeah. and, and things like that. So, uh, so what we do is we tend to groom it off them as well. Um, because Alice, she's having problems shedding a few bits right now, but we uh, spend a bit, each, bit of time each day grooming those right. Off her, right? And I noticed you've put a few aids to help them get that fur off, haven't you? Yeah, so we have some scratching posts around and some logs and things like that. They love to have a good rub on those. It helps to shed that old fur. And let's face it, who doesn't like to scratch their bum every now and then? Exactly. <laughs> so there we go, guys. There are all the facts about our camels. Hope you enjoyed it. Cheers, Chris. Cheers. Hello, Alice. <laughs>